welcome to Replay Monday. I'm glad you were able to join us this morning. If you don't know, Replay Mondays were created with the purpose to bring fresh revelations from old teachings. So let's get started with today's replay. Get your notepad, get your coffee, and let's watch you gotta Replay learn how Mondays. to become good receivers. Sometimes we don't, a lot of times, we don't know how to receive from God. We don't, we know how to beg from God, but we really don't know how to receive what he's already said. My God, we really just don't know how to receive. We really don't know how to walk in what he said. We don't, we don't know how to chew on the meat. We don't know how to evolve. We don't know how to walk into the fullness of who he's calling us to be. We still eating on things of old and this ain't, this a whole, like this is a whole new season. And I'm not talking about a new year. I'm talking about this is a whole new season. Like we're in a whole new position in life. We're in a whole new place. My God. And we need fresh grace and a fresh anointing for that position. My God. God. And so we have to learn how to receive that because a lot of what we do and a lot of what we walk in is not by the flesh. And so I say, can I tell you what God shared with me this morning? Um, I was laying in my bed and I'm meditating and I'm praying in the spirit. And he said, look, my people don't know how to live. My God, my God. He said, look, my people are not living. My people are not living. They are merely existing and they think they are living because they they they're it's by emotions. They're assuming they're living by emotions, right? By emotions. And so <laughs> God is compelling us to live in this season, to not walk by our emotions, to not walk. As a matter of fact, I'm going to give you the scripture he he gave me, gave me for this. This is this is the scripture he gave me for this. And when he gave me this scripture, I was like, Lord, what are you saying to us in this season? And he just said, you guys, you're not there. My, my people are not lit. They're not living. They're existing. See, living is a spiritual response. Existing is an emotional response. Existing is, oh, come on, Holy Spirit. Existing is based on, um, Existing is based on emotional triggers that make me feel good. Living has the residue and produces fruit. It's a, my God, living, living has a different residue. Living produces fruit and then you can come. See, if I'm living, you can come eat off my tree. My God. And when you come eat off my tree, it will begin. Something will be placed in you and it will be get, begin to sprout in you. And so he just told me this morning, he was like, my people are not living. They're existing and it's emotional. So I, I wish I could take what's inside of me and put it in you for you to understand what God is saying. And so when we exist based when when everything that we do is based on an emotional response, that's not the living. That's not that's that's the emotionalism that has been taught to us for so long. When we live, we live by the spirit, not according to the flesh, not according to how I feel. Living in Christ produces fruit. Living by the Spirit produces fruit. Living by the Spirit produces patience. Living by the Spirit produces self-control. Come on, y'all. Living by the Spirit deals away with worry. That, that, I'm going to back this up. I'm getting ready to give it to you how he gave it to me in Scripture. So Romans 8, 14, it says, for those who are led by the Spirit of God our children of God, my God. And so when we are led by the spirit and we are living in him, that looks so different than existing. And so many of us have just been existing. Our words look like we're living, but our trees aren't producing fruit. Come on, y'all. Come on now. Come on now. Our words we quoting all the scriptures. We saying all the stuff. We posting all the selfies. We're, we're saying all the right things. 
but living is going to produce a fruit, a everlasting fruit, right? So for those of us who are led by the spirit, we're the, oh, I'm a child of God. Well, when you're a child of God, you led by the spirit. You're not led by emotions. You're not led by your flesh. When you're a child of God, you led by your spirit. It's not an emotional response. It's not, it's not, you understand, you understand in season and out of season that God is with us, that God is with us. So when the Lord was speaking to me this morning, he said, my people, I, my children are not living. They are just existing. Well, Y'all just, we just been existing and it's time for you to live. It's time for you to live. It's time for you to live. So John 10 and 10, Jesus is clear and tells them, look, the thief came to steal, kill, and destroy. Y'all better receive that this morning. He said, the thief came to kill, steal, and destroy. I came so that you could have life and have life more abundantly so that you can have a more abundant life. And that's not just in heaven, that's in earth as well. And so if I am not living, if I am just existing, then I I respond to his grace and mercy based on emotions, based on how I feel. So when God um, wakes me up in the morning and Lamentations 3 and 23 tells me you get fresh grace and fresh mer mercy, if that's my expectancy, if I'm living by the spirit, then I don't wake up in the morning with the weight of yesterday. For those led by the spirit of God are the children of God. I wake up every day expecting fresh grace. I wake up every day expecting brand new mercies. I wake up every day expecting to see the hand of God and to experience the hand of God. It's so much bigger than your emotions. It's so much bigger than what you're feeling. You may not always feel it. And so when we think it's a feeling, when we think it's a feeling, then we navigate according to feelings. So can I tell you what happens when we navigate according to feelings? My God, because feelings are triggered um, by emo feelings are triggered, Fe feelings are emotional response. Then we're up and up and down. We're, 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 we're up and down. We're, we're, we're up and down. So when let's get it, let's skip over to when Paul was talking to him, when Paul was said, had the thorn in his flesh and he just pleaded with the Lord. He's like, Lord, remove this thorn in my flesh. Lord, remove this thorn in my flesh. And I don't know if this was a spiritual thing or a physical thing. Lord, remove this thorn in my flesh. Lord, get rid of this thing that's in my flesh. And God says to him, real, I always say God is gangster like, I'm sorry. God, God says to him, real gangster like, my grace, no matter what's agitating you, no matter what's picking at you, just find that scripture for me. No matter what's pa agitating you, no matter what's picking at you, no matter what's coming for you, my God, my grace is sufficient. Whoa, my God, my grace, my grace is sufficient. It does not matter what you're going. And I, and if you weak right now, baby, I've come to make you strong. Your strength is to be found in me and nothing else. So when I'm living, no matter the agitator, whoa, my God, no matter the irritation, my God, God, my God, the word of God causes you to triumph. The word of God causes you to triumph. So when I'm living, my God, it's not based on the emotional things. It's not based on my feelings. It's not based on others' feelings towards me. So living looks different than just existing. Let me give you a little, I want to give you a little bit uh, more of this, right? Let me give you a little bit more of this to help you understand, my God. And this is also a segue into, we still learning how to submit to God. We're still getting ready to learn how to pray like Hannah prayer. Don't you think we off topic? We're not off topic. This is just how God builds us, right? So then, so then when I'm living, my 
God, I'm not emotionally responding to my surroundings. This, yes, Stephanie, this is very present tense. I'm caught up in the very moment. I'm not anxious. I'm not worried. I'm not consumed. I'm not thinking forward. I'm caught up in, like right now, I'm caught up in the devotional. I'm not thinking about what I'm going to, and I love breakfast. I'm not thinking about what I'm going to eat when I get off here. Like I'm caught up in every moment. I'm caught up in every conversation. I'm caught up in every place that I am. Um, I can experience and feel the grass. I can experience and feel the relationships. I don't take any relationship for granted. Whoa, my God. I don't take any relationship casually. I don't take any moment casually. I don't take those. I don't. Um, fam- can I say that? How say? Familiarity breeds contempt. I believe in that, right? I don't become so familiar with God. I don't come become so familiar with the people of God that I'm connected to. I don't become so familiar with the devotional. I don't become so familiar with my pastor. I'm so sensitive to the spirit because I understand that God moves by the spirit. My God. So it's not an emotional feeling. It's not an emo. It's not an emotional thing, right? So let me give you this. Let me give you this. So, because I think these, these, these pull together. So we're going to go back. And in my Bible it says the cure for anxiety. So this is Matthew, the sixth and the 25th. It says, therefore, I tell you, stop being worried by anxious, perpetually uneasy and distracted. That's what it means to be anxious, perpetually uneasy and distracted. When you are anxious, you are distracted. I'm going to say it one more time. When you are anxious, you are distracted. Mother, I thank you. Here I know. Father, I thank you for the strength of my voice. My voice ain't been this strong in a long time. Thank you for the strength of my vocal cords. I feel the power in my vocal cords. Thank you, Father. He says, that's why I tell you, stop being worried or anxious, perpetually uneasy or distracted about your life as to what you will eat, what you will drink, nor about your body as to what you will wear. Is life not more than food and your body not more than clothing? My God, this is look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor harvest, nor gather crops into the barns, yet your heavenly father keeps feeding them. Yet your heavenly father keeps taking care of them. Are you not worth much more than they? Are you not worth more than they? As a matter of fact, skip over to the, to the chapter, get to the verse where the angels, it's so funny because the Lord was sharing this with my uncle yesterday and now he's back sharing this with us. Skip over to the verse. If you didn't understand that you were not worth, that's why I said it's not a feeling or emotion. Because when you are guide, guided and led by your feelings and your emotions, you will not understand that you are a son of God by the spirit because you're still waiting to feel like one. I'm going home. <laughs> I'm going home. I'm going home. You're still waiting to feel the worthiness that you feel like you should feel feel like that you should feel like you're still waiting to feel the worthiness that you should feel from being a son of God. It's not a feeling. It's not a feeling. So if you're waiting to feel the worthiness, you won't receive the worthiness. You won't walk in the worthiness. You won't talk in the worthiness. You won't live in the worthiness, right? And so the scripture, the angel said, what art, what art man that thou art mindful of them? You made them a little lower than the angels. The, the angels were asking God, "How? why does man mean so much to you? Woo! My God, this is why you have to live by the spirit, (laughs) live by the spirit and not according to the flesh. Right. So the angels were proving how important this is why all scriptures breathe by God. This is why you got to spend time in your relationship with God. Like you got to receive that. You got to receive this by faith. It may not add up. It may not add up to your past. It may not add up to what you look like. It may not add up even to the things that you've done last night. But if you're waiting on a feeling to feel your heavenly father, you're, you're, you're probably going to be messed up. <laughs> you're, probably, you're probably going to be, you're probably going to be messed up. This is not a feeling. This is a receiving. This is um, by 
faith. This is understanding who your father is. Uh, this is supernatural, right? Go back to Romans 8, 15, 14. For those who are led by the spirit of God are the children of God. So I accept being a child of God and I don't do the things that I do based on a feeling. I have to say, receive that by faith. He was loving one. Without faith, it's impossible to leave God. I've said that multiple, multiple times. Faith is our currency. Faith is our currency. Faith is how we live. Faith is how we purchase things. Faith is how we receive. So this is a receiving type thing. So let me go back in. It says, yet your heavenly father keeps feeding them. Are you not worth more, more than they? You are worth more to God than a bird. You are worth more to God than the things. My God. So he says, and who of you by worrying can add one hour to the length of his life? What good does worry do you? What good does worry do you? What good does worry do you? Paul said it best. Be anxious for absolutely nothing. Everything in prayer and supplication. Making your requests known before God. And then I always say, I'm expecting you, God, to answer. And then with thanksgiving, I'm just going to begin to magnify you and pray you for what I know you've already done. For what I know you've already done. And the reason I'm saying for what I know you've already done, because he's already wrote books out about us. He's already wrote books out about us. So it says, and why are you worried about clothes? See how the lilies and the flowers of the field grow. They do not labor, nor do they spin wool to make clothing. Yet I say to you that I'm even Solomon, all his glory and splendor, dressed himself like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive and green today and tomorrow, is cut and thrown into the furnace, he will not much more clothe you, you of little faith. Therefore, do not worry, be anxious, perpetually uneasy or distracted, saying, what are we going to eat? What are we going to wear? What are we going to do? This is the part I wanted to get to. This is the part I wanted to get to. It says, for the pagan. And when I'm using the word pagan, those that are not led by the spirit, for the pagan eagerly seek all these things. For the pagan, those that are not led by the spirit, right? are the ones that are worrying over these things. Those that are not living, my God, are worried over those things. Those that, so when I'm anxious, I'm not living. When I'm worried, I'm not living. <laughs> my God, when I'm not allowing my spirit, my God, to lead and make decisions for me, when I'm not showing up and being present, when I'm not obeying God, when I'm not honoring God, when I'm not operating in the fullness, when I don't receive by faith, what he says, he says, for the pagan, the pagans seek these things. The pagans worry about clothes. The pagans worry about food. The pagans worry about shelter. The pagans are distracted by those things. Those that are not my children, those that are not led by the spirit, they're worried about things because anybody who knows me knows I'm a good father. Whoa, my God. Anybody who knows me knows I'm going to take care of them. Anybody who knows me knows I got your back. Anybody who knows me knows that I'm God. That's what we told the children. He, go over there. Skip over to Isaiah. We love to say they that wait upon the Lord. Back up to the 28th verse. He said, <laughs> God's so gangster. He, he said, have you not seen? Have you not heard? Like, do you not know who I am? Do you not understand who I am? Do you not understand the power of who I am? Well, when I'm pagan and I'm not led by the spirit, my flesh seeks out all these things. Come on, Holy Spirit. My flesh seeks for these things. My flesh looks for these things. My flesh desires these things. My flesh longs for these things. And so then when I get these things, they, these things determine whether I'm happy or not. These are the things, this is the motive. This is, can I even, can I, can I speak big this morning? This is really the motivating factor of why I seek God. I seek God. My God, I'm seeking God for relief, not for relationship. My God, there's so much power on this. I'm seeking God for relief and not for relationship. Because when I seek him for relationship, I'm seeking the face of my father, not the hand of my father. My God. See, when I seek him for relief, my God, I don't understand the sufficiency of his grace. When I seek him for relief, 
I don't understand the sufficiency of his grace. I don't stand, I don't understand that he still holds my hands in dark times. I don't understand that he's with me in the valley. I don't understand. I don't understand it. When I seek him for release, relief, instead of seeking him for relationship, my God, instead of coming in relationship, then my amount, my, 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 my mountain will always be too great. My mountain, my mountain will always be too great. My, my, my circumstances and situations will always have me anxious. My, and, and the way that I know the devil, the way that I know the devil, as soon as one thing comes, gets over, as soon as one thing gets over, something else is about to show up to see and determine if you're seeking God for a relationship and not relief. My God, to see whether or not you're seeking God for a relationship and not for relief, because there is a difference when you are seeking him for relationship. This is not emotional response. This is, this is not an emotional response. There's a fruit that comes when the relationship, there's a, there's, come on now, can, hold on, hold on, I'm going to give you that too. Come on, Holy Spirit. So he says, there's a he says, but first and most importantly, seek, aim, strive after his kingdom and his righteousness, his way of doing things, his way. Remember when the Lord showed us in this season, we're going to have to, um, we're, we've been this way before, so we can't assume the way we've done God is the right way in this season. My God, my God, I thank you for this. He says, but first and more, he said, he says, for, but first and most importantly, seek him, aim, strive, his kingdom, his righteousness, his way of doing and being right, the attitude and the character of God. My God, that's what it means when I'm seeking kingdom first, right? We say, we say that all the time, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven. Well, what am I going to get when I start seeking first the kingdom of heaven? You're going to get his kingdom. <laughs> You're going to get his righteousness. You're going to get his way of doing things. You're going to get his way of being right. And you're going to start to operate in the attitude and the care to God. God, absolutely right, y'all. His relationship going to yield fruits. My God, his relationship going to yield fruits. <laughs> Come on, Holy Spirit. His re <laughs> My God. His relationship is going to yield fruit. His relationship, being in a relationship with him, is going to produce something, right? That's why I say all the time. And you shall know them by their fruit. You shall know them that are pagans by their emotional response, by the things they worry over, by the way they talk, by the way they up and down, by the way they still trying to feel things out. This is not a feeling, right? You're going to know them. Those that you're going to know, you're going to know them. So, oh, come on. So let me give you. So if I'm living by the spirit, if I'm seeking you for the relationship, my God, that's so powerful. If I'm seeking you for the relationship and not for the relief, baby, like I'm seeking you for the relationship and not for the relief. I'm not looking just to feel good. It's going to look different. It's going to produce different. It's going to be sustaining, right? So let me give you this. Let me, let me, let me give you this. So I'm, that means I'm walking by the spirit. Let me scoop up, scoop over. Five, yeah, Galatians 5. It was, for, it was for this freedom that Christ set us free. When Christ sets us free, it's completely liberating. Christ did not give you partial freedom. If you are bound in chain, there are other things that have you bound in chain. Your mind has to be renewed. Romans 12 and 2. This is why it's important for us to renew our mind. Because anything that's chaining and locking us and has us bound does not come from God. It does not. And we charge God all the time with in momentary confusion. We charge God all the time in perplexity. When we in perplex and momentary confusion, we'll stay in a holding pattern, confusing, um, confusing what's going on around us spiritually and say it's God. Well, God just has no God ain't got you in this holding pattern. God ain't got you in no chains. God ain't got you bound and in those strongholds. That's not what God. God is when we free we free he who the son sets free is free indeed so if I believe anything less than my freedom if I walk in anything less in my freedom it's because there is something in 
my mind that has yet to be renewed. And that's the thing that's keeping me bound. And that's the thing that has me in a holding pattern. And that's the thing that has me complacent. And that's the thing that has me procrastinating. And that's the thing that's breaking my momentum. It's the things that I have yet unlocked in the spirit that are still being held up by my fleshly ways, my fleshly thinking, the way that I receive God. My God. So let's go over to Galatians 5. My God. And it says it was for the freedom that Christ set us free, completely liberating us, not partially, completely liberating us. You need to say that God complete Christ completely let me free. You need to say that I'm supposed to be completely free, not partially bound. Anything else that has me bound is in the flesh. It is not according to the spirit. It says, therefore, keep standing firm and do not be subject again to a yoke of slavery, which you were once removed. Then I've got to make a decision to keep my mind free, <laughs> to keep my mind unlocked. I got to consistently, you, can I tell you something? All the other stuff you thought you had for in this season, you ain't got no time. This is what you need. This your freedom, baby. This is what's going to help you walk in your destiny. This is a, this is what you, what's going to help you, um, receive maturity. There is a depth that you are going to have to go in God. If you want it, not, not if you want it, if, if you want, it. if you don't want it, stay right where you are. If you do want it, there is a depth that you're going to have to go. There's a place you're going to have to gnaw on. There's a place that you're going to have to chew on to get to this level of freedom, to get to be able to walk in this level of freedom, to be able to walk by the spirit and not by the flesh. It says, it says, note it is I, Paul, who tells you that if you receive circumcision, if you think it's doing <laughs> as a supposed requirement of salvation, Christ not going to be a no benefit of you. If you think it's by your flesh, if you think it's if, it, if you think it's by your doing, Christ ain't going to be no benefit of you. It ain't no halfway Christians, just like it ain't no halfway crooks. It ain't no halfway Christians. You are, you are. <laughs> it ain't no halfway Christians. It ain't no halfway crooks. We have to watch that because everything else becomes, um, everything else becomes excuses. Ain't no halfway Christian. Ain't no halfway crook. You a crook or not, right? Ain't no halfway Christians. You a Christian or not. You got to make a decision to not stand in the middle. He says, Christ will be of no benefit for you, for you will lack the faith in Christ that is necessary for salvation. And there is more to your salvation than you just going to hell. There is, I'm say this one more time. There is more to your salvation than you just going to hell. It is deeper than that. It is greater than that. There is wider than that. He says, once more, I solemnly affirm to every man who receives circumcision as a supposed required of salvation, that he is under obligation and required to live by the law. When we walk, my uncle said it best yesterday when he was teaching, when you walk according to the flesh, to this world's system, then guess what? You become a slave to this world's system. You will be enslaved to this system. When you think it's about this system, when you think it's about this world, when you, when you try, <laughs> when you see, you're supposed to be in this world, but not of this world. You're supposed to bring the kingdom to this world. You're supposed to bring this kingdom to your job. You're supposed to bring the kingdom in your house. My God, my, my God, you're supposed to, you're supposed to take the kingdom with you. You're supposed to change your environment. You're supposed to change circumstance. You're supposed to change situations. You are we be we be in the world we be in the world with a little bit of kingdom in us not even realizing we still tied into the world system and the reason that it's evident is because of the fruit we bear come on y'all he says once he said he's once more, so you're not going to walk in the fullness of your salvation he says once more i solemnly affirm to every man my God, who receives circumcision as a supposed requirement of salvation, that he is under obligation and required to keep the whole law. It says you have been severed from Christ if you seek to be justified. If you seek to be justified, that is declared free of guilt of sin and its penalty and placed in right standing with God through the law. If you think it's about your doing, if you don't understand that it's not emotional, if you don't understand that it's not by the flesh, it's by the spirit. My God, it's not by the flesh, it's by the spirit. You're going to be severed from Christ. Christ is not going to be any good in your life. Kingdom is not going to mean absolutely anything to you. You're only going to see glimpses of the kingdom. You're only going to see 
pieces of the kingdom. So therefore, in the beginning, when God says, my people are not living, my people are not living, it's because we're still trying to be justified according to the law. We're still trying to be justified according to my flesh. Go back to what was said earlier, seeking him for relief instead of relationship. Come on now. It says you've been severed. He said, he said, for you have fallen from grace for you have lost your grasp on God's unmerited favor and blessing. You have lost your grasp. You have lost your, when you live according to the flesh, go back to Romans 8 and 14. Go back to Romans 8, 14. For those who live by the spirit of God are the children of God. My God, when you are still trying to live in two worlds, as my uncle said yesterday, when you still trying to live in two systems, as my uncle said yesterday, you have lost your grasp on what kingdom is. You were not created to fit in here. You were not. You were not supposed to fit. You've been still trying to fit in. You've been still trying to be a part. You've been still trying to get people to accept you. You've been still trying to feel a part and belong when he created you to be in this world and not of the world. You're supposed to stand out. You're supposed to look different. You're supposed to walk different. You're supposed to act different. Now listen, not trying to be, just operating in the authenticity of who he called you to be in Christ Jesus. I like being a misfit. Not trying to be a misfit. Just I know this is who he called me to be. But what we do is modify ourselves in the flesh to be accepted and to feel love. Again, a life by the spirit is not based on your emotions and your feelings. My God, my God. So if you're still feeling, waiting on to feel like you belong to God, you are just as lost as the pagans. If you're still waiting to feel like you belong to God and have not accepted it, you, you lost. You still lost. You still not walking in freedom. You still bound. You still locked up. You still confused. You still complacent. My God. Set, yeah, Alvisha separated for his purpose. Set apart. So if you still trying to please people, if you still trying to get people to sign off on what he called you to do, if you still get you you're confused still by the flesh. Let me let me wrap this up. My God. So it says, for, well, for we not relying on the law, but through the strength and the power of the Holy Spirit, right? For we, we are not relying on the law. We're not relying on our flesh. We're not, we're not. Can I, and can I say this about different? You don't go and try to be different. You just live differently because you live by the spirit. See, we'll get confused and I'm different and try to make ourselves different. This isn't a make. This is a being. This is a being. This is because the word of God working in me sets me apart. My God. See, what, can I tell you something? I'm a culture changer. I know that. By the spirit, not by my flesh. I'm a culture changer. God sent me into this world to change culture. That's why anytime something big shows up and everybody is doing it, I start praying in the spirit to see if I'm supposed to be a part of it because I know where God is is not on the wide path. God is not, God is not on the wide path. So when I see everybody jumping on something, I, pa I don't care who it is. I don't care how great their name is. I don't care what they say. I pause in the spirit and I begin to pray and ask God for revelation on what is this? And is this something you want me to be a part of? Because you created me to change culture, not to be in the culture, not to be like the culture, not to be of the culture. So is this from you, daddy God? Should I be a part of this? Because if everybody's doing it, it's not, it's not the straight and narrow path. It's not the straight and narrow path. And we have to watch because sometimes things will look like they're producing. They'll look like they're producing, right? But that's the trap. <laughs> that's the hole. That's, that's, that's the trap. That's what the enemy wants us to look like. So narrow, yeah, narrow is the way. Broad is the way to destruction. Okay, let me. That was that, that was free. It says, "For we not relying on the law, but through the strength and power of the Holy Spirit by faith, are waiting confidently. We wait 
confidently. We wait confidently. And the reason that we can wait confidently is because it's by the Spirit. We can wait confidently. I'm not impatient if I'm living by the Spirit. My God, I'm not impatient if I'm living by the Spirit. He says, we, he said, because we can wait, because while we're waiting, they that wait upon the Lord, you got to connect the dots, baby. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew the strength. So while we're waiting, the Holy Spirit is strengthening us. While we're waiting, the Holy Spirit is giving us power. While we're waiting, the Holy Spirit is pruning us. While we're waiting, the Holy Spirit is processing us. While we're waiting, the Holy Spirit is developing us so that you can soar, baby. So that when you take off, when you take flight, my God, you don't have to come down. The only time you come down is land and land is when the Lord tells you to come down and land. Come on now. It says, for by faith we are waiting confidently for the hope of righteousness, the completion of our salvation. Philippians 1 and 6, God going to complete this thing. He going to finish you out. So even in your waiting period, you're being developed. You're being developed. You're being proved. You're gaining endurance. You're gaining. Can I tell you something? One of the biggest things I, when I coach, when I coach my coach, my, my mentees, when I, when I, when I, when I'm their surrogate, when I'm midwifing them, one of the things I tell them, don't worry about what it looks like everybody else is doing. You wait your turn. And this is why I know waiting is important. In your waiting, the Holy Spirit will build you up confidently. So when you launch your business, so when you launch your ministry and the enemy comes in like a flood to try to prove that you're not worthy of this, the confidence of what the Holy Spirit says. Can, can, can I share this? Yes. So my, my Josiah is a big kid, has been a big kid all his life. It is not that kids have not teased him. It is not that uh, people have not ostracized or alienated him because he was different. But because, and it is not that he hasn't ever felt the pain of it. He has. But what brews up in him is the confidence of who he is in Christ Jesus. So even when the enemy tries to come for him and attack his character and attack his uniqueness and attack his personality, the word bubbles up. Up more. The, the words that I've spoken over him, the things that I've said in his ear, the word of God, the confidence that I've taught him in Christ bubbles up more. So he's not moved by what they're saying. Even if it stings, even if it hurts just a little bit, he's not moved by what he's saying because his confidence is in the Christ in him. My God. So in our waiting, my God, the Holy Spirit builds us up. That's why you can't run yet. That's why some of you can't take off yet. That's why some of you can't leap yet. It's not that your time isn't coming. It's that you need to be prepared in the wait so that when you do take off, your confidence is in Christ Jesus. Oh, my God. I got to get out of here. Y'all pulling on me this morning. I wasn't even headed in this direction. So then when your confidence is in Christ Jesus, it won't shake you. It won't shake you. The word will be developed. So then when you go do great things, right? You, when you go do great things, when you do stuff that don't make sense, when you're just operating in your natural. And I'm just using him as an example because last year he operated in his natural. At the end of the year, he received the reward for being student of the year. When he came to, out of the whole school, he, re, he received the award of being ninth grade of the year. This was based on academics. This was based on spiritual. He made some really tough decisions his ninth grade year. In his ninth grade year, he decided to pull himself away in second part. He walked away from some friendships. He walked away from some relationships. It was not easy for him. He walked away from some things that he desired as a young man his age. Well, at the end of the year, when he received his reward for being different, for being like Christ, he came to me because this is my most humble child. I'm just telling you, he is my most humble, quiet child. He came to me and he said, this was God rewarding me for being different. Absolutely. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount upon wings like eagles. They shall run and not get weary. They shall walk and not faint. 
Absolutely, bud. This is my reward, mom. For me, he didn't. Know. This is my reward for me. This is God rewarding me for being different, for being set apart, for making a decision to choose him above all else. Absolutely, bud. This is your reward. Greatest God's faithfulness when you seek him first. Let me wrap this thing up. It says, for if we are in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision or uncircumcision means absolutely anything, but only faith activated and expressed and working through love. God's only desire is for you to trust and obey him. My God, his only desire is for you to trust and obey him. That's what love looks like express. God, I will trust what you're saying to me. God, I will obey you no matter what. God, I will honor you in every decision I make. God, I will lay down my life for you. But there's a depth to this. So he says, he says, he says, he says, you were running a race well. Who has interfered and prevented you from obeying the truth? This deceptive persuasion is not from him who called you to freedom. It is not from him that called you to freedom. It is not from him to call that called you to freedom. I'm going to say it one more time. That deception, that lie, that wide path is not from him that called you free. He says, a little leaven, a slight inclination to error, my God, or a few false teachers leavens the whole batch. It perverts the concept and faith and misleads the church. I have confidence in you and the Lord that you will adopt no other view contrary to mine or to on the matter. But the one who is deserving you, whoever he is, will have to bear the penalty. So let me skip. Let me skip over here to the 18th verse. He talks about all the ways that look like the flesh. Then he gets to the 18th verse. He said, but if you are guided and led by the spirit, my God. You are not subject to the law. <laughs> Did y'all hear me? If you are guided and led by the spirit, you are not subject to the law. You are not subjected to the laws of this world. You are not subject. When you are guided and led, led by the spirit, when you are led by the spirit and not led according to your flesh, you are not subjected to the law. You got to receive this by the spirit, right? <laughs> because remember the flesh, the law and the spirit are in opposition. Go back to the scripture where it says you cannot serve two gods. You're going to love one. You're going to hate the other. You're going to love one. You're going to hate the other. You're going to love one. You're going to hate the other. He said for these two, the two sinful nature spirits are in direct opposition to each other, continually in conflict so that you as believers do not always do whatever good things you want to do. Now, the practice of the sinful nature are clearly evident. Sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, total irresponsibility, lack of self-control, idolatry, sorcery, hostility, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, disputes, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, riotous behavior, all of these things. But the fruit of the spirit. <sighs> Come on, Julia. Can you go back to that? One bad thought will spoil the whole movement. But the fruit of the spirit, the result of his presence being with us, right? Submit to God, resist the devil, and he's going to flee. God can't exist in anything that's not holy. My God, when Christ is ever present, he is ever changing. My God, the, that's the blood. That's how the blood works. When Christ is present, he is ever changing. So if I'm in a circumstance, a situation, and it don't look like it's changing, I need to ask, is Christ ever changing? present. See, there's an environment that has to be established that's conducive for healing. And I'm not just talking about physical healing. I know this because I've had to walk in this, right? So that's what it says. It says, but the fruit of the spirit, the result of his presence with us is love, right? Love. When I love, I have sacrificial unmerited deeds to help a needy person. When I love you at this level, it's sacrificial. You don't have to earn it. 
I'm going to help you when you need in need. That's what this kind of love is. Lord, help us to increase our love walk, right? The next part of this is joy. It's an inner happiness, not dependent on outward situations. I got to get out of here. I got to get out of here. When it's joy, this is not wild words. It's right. Peace. It's harmony in all my relationships. When I'm walking in the spirit, not harmony in some of my relationships, harmony in all of my relationships, right? That's what it is when it's peace. When I'm walking in this level of patience, I'm putting up with others, even when one is severely tired. Oh! And even when I'm severely tried, I'm putting up with others, even when I'm severely tried. When I'm walking in this kind of kindness, I'm doing thoughtful deeds for others. I'm not doing thoughtful deeds for others when I feel like it. Again, it's not a feeling or an emotion. I'm doing thoughtful deeds for others all the time. I'm looking how God can use me as the hands and feet of Jesus throughout the earth. I'm always looking to serve and I'm serving whether I'm being asked or not. That's what true service is. Service don't, true service don't wait on to be asked. True service moves in action. My God, whether I ask or not. Goodness, I'm showing generosity to others. Faithfulness, I'm trustworthy and reliable. People can count on me and God can count on me. People can count on me and God can count on me. Gentleness, I'm walking in meekness and I'm walking in humility. I'm walking in meekness and I'm walking in humility. And then self-control, I'm having victory over all my selfish desires. I'm having victory. That's what it's like when I'm living by the Spirit. So when the Lord comes to us in this morning and says, you're not living yet. What he's saying to us, baby, is you're not walking in my spirit. You're still walking in the flesh. You're still seeking me for relief. My God, and I need you to seek me for a relationship. My God, and the fruit of the spirit is evident whether I feel like it or not. Father God. What an amazing word from the Lord. The Holy Spirit is the advocate, the teacher, the comforter, the helper, and he helps us today. I cannot wait until the morning when we are sipping at six. So grab your girlfriend or your boyfriend, your pen, your coffee, your tea, whatever works for you, and we will see you live in the a.m. Stay tuned for the upcoming announcements. And remember, I love you. God loves you. Go be loved today. Lakeisha M. Johnson, also known as LMJ, is an evangelist, teacher, entrepreneur, mentor, author, trainer, and community advocate. She is the founder of LMJ Ministries and CEO of LMJ Inc., a printing, publishing, and consulting firm. Lakeisha self-published her first book in April 2019, entitled The Launch, a book for anyone who wants to start anything. She is the host of Coffee and Conversations, a digital interactive daily devotional on 11 podcast outlets, including Apple Podcast, Google Podcast, Facebook Live, YouTube, and Instagram. She's been heard in over 40 countries. She is the creator and host for Pillow Talk, an exclusive event created by women, especially for women. Lakeisha is mission-minded. She is focused on serving God by serving others. If you had to describe her in one word, it would be tenacious. Lakeisha believes in order to impact our communities and make significant impact, a person should be actively engaged in service and or entrepreneurship and love. Lakeisha's famous quote is, Go be loved today. Ladies and gentlemen, Lakeisha M. Johnson.